at 7.34 p.m. And um, I would ask, uh, starting, I don't know if everybody has their um, screens the same, but Karen, would you start to, by, and identify yourself, please? Um, yes, sure. I'm Karen Kopta, a member. Doug? Uh, Douglas Lewis, alternate. Margaret. Margaret oh, Minor, member. Nancy? Nancy Schoenholz, alternate. Sue? Sue Scott, alternate. Okay. Thank Judith you. Kelly. Oh, sorry, Judith. I know you can't see me, but I'm there. <laughs> yes, you, yes, you are. Yes, you are. So, uh, Doug, um, Bill can't join us. So, Doug, I'm going to move you up. Okay. All right. Okay. And I will um, proceed to open the public hearing and read the notice. Um, the Roxbury Zoning Board of Appeals will hold a public hearing on Thursday, April 30th, 2020 at 7.30 p.m. by a teleconference to consider the application of Anna and Graydon Carter, Assessors Map 18, Lot 34, located at 5 Chaldees Road, Case File 2020-0083, Variance to Construct a Shed Dormer on the Back of the Garage, which would allow the height needed to build a, a staircase to the second floor loft, construct a bathroom and, re and repair rot and damage to the structure of the building. Reference zoning regulation variance 3.10.4. And following that are the instructions. At this hearing, interested persons may access the meeting. And following that are the instructions for how to join the meeting. Um, a copy of the application was available on the website. Okay, so Brent, are you starting? Sure, yeah, I can start. So I'm um, Brent Benner, I'm a contractor in town, and uh, Anna and Graydon asked me to do some work on their barn, uh, fix up some of the structure of it. There's a little bit of rot and other things, but the main part of what we are having trouble with is uh, what we need you for is the dormer on the back of the barn. It has a second floor loft, but there's no easy access to get there. It's like a ladder um, and it's, it's not easy to access. So they want to use that for storage space and um, utilize the barn and garage that they have and just fix it up, make it um, nice and keep it from falling down and um, be able to use it. So, um, there's uh, we have a drawing of um, the back the dormer that's on the back. Um, Julie, can you do you have those drawings or can I share my screen just to show that? Um, I actually, if you may have something a little bit better than me. Okay. Um, so that's um, what I have. Hold on one second. I don't know if you guys can see that. I don't know if you have something that's more of a close up. Yes, we can see it. Yeah. So, um, can I, can I share my screen, Julie? Ah, uh, let me see if I can give you control. Okay. Okay, hang on one second here. Let's see. Um, Do we have the notifications to the neighbors? Yes, sorry, I skipped over that. I emailed that to uh, Nanette earlier. Um, so the, um, let me just, let me just um, explain that um, the, the, the abutters had been notified prior to the last meeting. Okay. And then under the executive order, Brent was permitted to notice this meeting by placing a copy of the legal notice on the barn, which he did. Okay, thank you very much. That's a good question. Um, 
So on the what we want to do is add a dormer on the back. Can you see my screen? Yes. Yes. Yeah. So this here's a shot of the end of the barn right now. Uh, here's a better shot. This is it. So we will zoom in here. Here's here's the barn right now. This line and this dotted line and it goes down like this. We want to add this dormer so that we can get this um, staircase to get up into this loft space here. All of this exists. We just want to be able to use that space and safely get up there and use the space. So um, the other part, let's see if I have another view. <coughs> This is the back of the building. This would be where the dormer is, or would be. And you, um, this would be the front. The front would stay exactly the same. We'd still have these garage doors. We'd still have all of this space over here on the side. And um, uh, we've also talked to Wendy Walker with the Historic Commission. And she, I sent you an email earlier, a copy of her email, Nanette, about um, she approves of it. She has no problem with it. Um, it's really not visible from the public side. It's only visible from this back side of um, Great Nanana's property. Brent, did you just send that today? I did, yeah, um, like maybe seven o'clock or so. so. Oh, all right. I, okay. you, I have a copy of it somewhere here. If I could, I might go to that'd pull. be great. Hold on one second. Give me one minute here. I'm not great with, I'm better with power tools than. Uh, <laughs> You're doing very well. Yeah. Hold on. Let's see. Uh, okay. Oh, thank you. Okay. This one? This yep. Okay. So yeah. this is her email to John Blaney to um, approve him to um, give us a permit once we're at that stage so and this was from early march that she sent this i met with her went over the plans with her and she's seen our full set of plans great okay great um, thank you let's see what else um the i think um i think that's you know, I think that's I think all I have. <laughs> I think you were about to show us the uh, bathroom, Brent. So there is a bathroom. Um, Barbara Henry said that this is all interior space and that she has, uh, she's, she gave me an email. I also have an email from her saying that that was approved, that we could go ahead with the bathroom. Do you know anything about that, Nanette? Was that? I do not. No. Uh, <laughs> second. I got another email from. Um, so, so then that's not really part of your uh, what you're asking. I think it was early on, but um, it sounded like that what was it. Hang on. I, 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 well, let's see it. I'm, I'm not clear. Um, oh, there we go. Here's an email from this is. Uh, wait, go back. Okay. Okay. This is from officially. Okay. This is parts from Barbara and then this is Anna, Anna's response to that. So. Um, okay, uh, I don't know, I'm a little uncertain about who approved the yeah. bathroom. Uh, okay. Um, um, I don't think Barbara approves interior <laughs> bathrooms, so I'm, I, yeah. I don't know, who, I, I'm, I'm a little confused by this. Yeah, I, I, I thought that was all interior stuff and that we were talking about exterior stuff and, and, um, and that. So Brian, do you know anything about? Um, well, I, I think the variance is really concerning the, um, oh, this is Brian Neff, sorry. 
concerning the dormer itself, expansion of the existing non-conforming building? Unfortunately, the bathroom is is part of the application. As part of the application. Okay. Um, okay. Before you close your presentation, Brent, could you talk about the hardship, please? So our hardships are number one. Our hardship is the setback of the property. Um, the barn is in the setbacks. It was built before the zoning um, ordinances came into play and the owners had no control over the barn being where it is. They want to fix up the barn, they want to maintain it, and they want to be able to use it. Um, and um, they really uh, they really can't do that so uh, without your permission to do some things. So the other part of it is the safety. They want to get to the second floor safely. They want to store some things up there and they want to be able to uh, use the space that they have without um, without getting hurt using it. So, um, and they want a bathroom for their workers. That's mm -hmm. in the application. It is. It is. Our last one is this this bathroom. If we can, um, you know, it's been more and more clear that we need uh, we need people to wash their hands and to be uh, um, you know be clean. So uh, to have this bathroom is going to be critical for. Um, landscapers, tradespeople, um, and whoever else is working on the property there. Show us where the bathroom is. Sure thing. Hang on one second. So, it's in this back corner. These are the three doors on the front of the, of the garage that face the road. The road is out here. And this bathroom would be in this back corner. Okay, so um, anything else, Andy, Brian? No, I'm just uh, here in case Brent needed my help. Okay. I think, uh, this, is, this is Brian. Just one, one quick comment regarding the bathroom. Um, just for the record, the uh, Newtown Health District has approved the, uh, the bathroom connection into the existing septic for the house. So they, they issued that approval uh, last week. Okay. Okay. Um, so he, we're gonna proceed as follows. The um, members and alternates of uh, the ZBA will ask questions first, and then we'll open it to public comment or um, and then um, we will have discussion um, that we need to further clarify the application and then we will either continue or um, close the hearing and go into the regular meeting. So um, I think, can we go back to the gallery view so we can see each other? Uh, it's Julie, I think, right? How do you... Oh, wait, I think I have to stop share. Hang on one second. Yeah, you, you're still up, Brent. Yeah, yeah okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, just for, so we're not all jumping in at the same time. Um, we can't see each other. Okay, let me stop the share and then. Okay, good. Okay, I'm just gonna, um, just for purposes of clarity, I'm just gonna call out people. Um, Karen, questions? Uh, uh, yes, okay. Um, I'm Karen Copta, member. Um, it appears, Brent, from your application as well as from the presentation that you just did um, that you are not proposing any kind of uh, change in the footprint. Is that correct? That's correct. This, the size of the barn, the footprint of the barn is exactly the same. We're not changing any, any of the uh, footprint of the building. Okay. Anything else, Karen? 
not not for me, not at this point. Okay, we'll come back. Doug? Um, I, ha I had thought that the application, um, that the stairway uh, was going to be on the exterior. Am I uh, incorrect in that? Uh, yeah, that's not correct. It's all in interior. Yep. Okay. And, um, you know, you, you mentioned that, you know, the, the goal of the homeowners was to, to fix and maintain uh, the, the existing barn. They, they could certainly do both of those things without the variance request tonight, correct? Uh, correct. And we've been doing some of that also along the way here to try to uh, fill in our time here. <laughs> so, uh, and, and I noticed on one of the emails, uh, I think the owner uh, indicated to you that it was uh, her opinion you could go ahead with the bathroom. Have you put the bathroom in already? No, we have not put the bathroom in. Um, and, and the third thing I think you said was that they wanted to uh, utilize the storage on the second floor. You're saying that without this variance, they can't use the storage? Uh, they, can't, they can't easily use, it, use the storage. It's about seven feet up in the, uh, and there's a, a ladder. The only way to have the cars in there and use it like a real garage is to just have a ladder that's removable um, because they don't have the headroom in other parts of the garage to get a real staircase. <clears throat> when you say a real staircase, how wide is a, the staircase that you're proposing? Three feet wide. It's a normal staircase. So you can't uh, you can't put a staircase in there now. No, not and still use it as a garage. No. Uh, if I'm, there were three bays for cars. Is that correct? Yes. Yes. So there. if you put a staircase in inside now, you would lose all three bays for cars. Um, you would lose. Um, at least one of the bays for cars, yeah. So, so if you just utilize what was there, you could put a staircase, but you may not be able to park three cars, but you'd probably be able to park two. Yeah, you're correct, you're right. And, and the hardship, you said the hardship related to the setbacks, but that's, that's not a hardship, correct? That's, that's the, the, the regulations. I think Brian no. can explain that. Um, this is, uh, this is Brian. Uh, in terms of the hardship, the, uh, the existing building located within the um, within the side yard uh, is something that is a uh, characteristic of the property. It was um, it was built back in the early 1900s, prior to any zoning regulations. So it's it's an existing structure on the property that is. Uh, it was built prior to regulations, but uh, you know, based upon the current regulations, it's it's non-compliant. So it's a uh, it, it's a pre-existing non-conforming building, right? We under that's correct. That's correct, and it's and it's a it's it's a you know it's basically a structure that exists on the property that um, is difficult to to work with. Without some kind of a variance for uh, for utilization and, and a little bit of expansion for the access. This is Judith Kelly, but it has been in constant use. Am I correct? Yeah. You have been parking and using that, right? Yes, they have. Yes. I mean, Did you say yes? Yes. Yes, they have been using. Okay. I would say the other thing that makes it difficult with the with the parking is that it's so close to the road that a three car garage is um, is ideal that we can get the cars off of the road there and not be parking right right on the street. Um, so yeah. to have the space and to, to use the space that they already have is um, is ideal instead of taking <coughs> for a staircase. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay, D Doug. No, I, I I think I asked my questions. Thank okay. you, Nancy. Nancy. Yeah. Okay. I had to unmute. Oh. So that you don't hear the dogs in the background. Um. Hi, I'm Nancy Schoenholz. I uh, the, the I guess the the question I have is that you're saying that you're 
you're going to need the dormer in order to build a staircase that's high enough so that you can get in. But yet the dormer is fairly extensive, right? It is, yeah. So, yeah. And you need that entire size of a dormer in order to build a staircase. We need, uh, I could show you the drawing here. Can you go to, Julie, can you go to your other screen there? You know, so we can see the dormer on the back. And put it in the box room. Half of the dormer is is for the staircase, I would say, and the other half is just balancing the barn and trying to keep in character of the barn. Okay. Nancy, any more? No, I th I think I think that's all I have. I just wanted clarification. Okay, okay. Margaret. Hi, Margaret Miner. Following up on Doug's questions, I think. I, I really couldn't see a hardship. So I, I tried to go back and look at the new, um, the, the new regulations regarding saving barns. And I didn't see, well, first of all, has it been, I think they apply to a barn that I guess the Historic District Commission calls a barn of historic significance. Is this, um, has this been designated in that way? The regulation refers to nothing in the zoning shall be, uh, I don't know, interpreted to interfere with making a new use of a barn of historic significance. Is, and that's like capitalized, historic significance. Um, let me make a guess. That, does anyone know the answer to that? Well, the historic district has approved it. I'm looking for um, something in the barn, uh, the encouragement of reuse of barns to see if it could be helpful to this applicant. Um, and then John Cody pointed to, you know, you could have a 25% more use, but only on a primary building. This is distinctly <laughs> a separate building. Am I right? Uh, yes. Um, the, uh, is there any way of doing a compensatory reduction of the nonconformity some other place uh, on the property? Mm. Do you have a garbage bin? You, could, you know, I don't, what? Do you have any, any other means of reducing a, a, a little bit of the nonconformity? Um, I'm sure we could find something and come back. Yeah, but I, <laughs> yes, we have a garbage bin. We have uh, other things. I could talk to the owners and see what they're what they're willing. As I, to do. as I understand it, and, and Judith and Doug will know, the the thing is you can't. If in a nonconform, I have a nonconforming building because it was old building, you know, on a small lot, it built a lot, so it's it is a problem. Okay. <laughs> but but I think that the doesn't the regulation say um, you can't change it structurally unless it the the work reduces the nonconformity. Well, this work doesn't reduce the nonconformity; it, it extends it a little bit. But I was wondering if there was some other. But my proposal, I, I would defer to Doug on this. I'm looking for um, a way that, because it's a barn, has it been used? Is it still defined as a barn use, or it is already kind of um, it's, been it's, repurposed? No, it's, it's a barn use. I mean, it's uh, timber framed inside. There's a lot of nice beams in there, um, many of which we're going to leave exposed. Um, so. It's yeah. certainly old. I mean, most of the structure is hand hewn, uh, which dates it to uh, the latest, the early 19th century. Um, possibly earlier than that, the house is dated at 1795. Uh, and I suspect that this would have been the original barn on the property. Uh, oh, it looks, kind of work. It, it looks beautiful. I was just thinking the, the, the new regulation that applies to barns refers to wanting to make it possible for them to be adapted to a new use. 
So, Margaret, may I make a suggestion? Let's get through all of our questions, and then I would give Jim Conway, um, if he would, uh, an opportunity to talk about how that exception can, how it works. Okay. okay. So, to sum up then, my question's related to um, any possibility of reducing the nonconformity in some compensatory way. Do the new regulations relating to bonds help the applicant in any way? And um, <laughs> I was looking for a couple of other things, but those were, I didn't otherwise see a hardship. Yeah. Okay, Sue. I think everybody has pretty much covered what I would be asking. I, I still have a little bit of a problem with the dormer being built for the staircase. Same thing that we, I forget who it was that mentioned it. Um, would there be an, another way of getting at, gaining access interiorly? to that loft area without maybe having to put a dormer on? I mean, is it so because it's so low? It's because the ceilings are so low that uh, we can't. There's no way to access it. Access the space. Yeah. Safely. I understand the ladder. I was just wondering about the staircase design. Was there a way of getting up there without having to put a dormer on. Uh, not easily. Okay. That would be my only question. Okay, Judith? Uh, I didn't introduce myself, but I apologize. Judith? Uh, this is Judith Kelly, and uh, I'm a little confused. I assumed that the boss room was going to be upstairs um, no, bathroom's on the first floor on the garage level. I see. Okay. <clears throat> and the only reason that you're going to do the uh, the staircase is so that you can bring things upstairs to store. Is that correct? Yes. Hello? That's correct. Yes. Yes. Okay. What type of things are you going to be storing? They have furniture. They have seasonal items. Um, you know, I see. Like to yeah. Get, you know, everybody has this stuff that accumulates and they... Uh, <laughs> Tell me about it. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. That's all I need. Okay. Um, so I had just have a couple additional questions. Um, the on the application, you um, when you're giving the measurements, you show uh, an increase of two hundred seventy five square feet. Is that the dormer? So that's the. Um, I was working on this with Julie, and we're not really increasing the square footage of anything, but she asked me to figure out the square footage of the dormer going across there. So that's... Um, uh, the area under the roof of the dormer, essentially? Yeah, under the roof of the dormer, yeah. yeah. So, so that's essentially air, air that you're measuring? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> really, I wouldn't say it's really space that we can use. It's, uh, Except for the staircase. Um, okay. Uh, can you explain to us? I I've heard the I've heard the building referred to several different ways, and it looks like there are three sections. So I read about a garage, I read about a barn, and I read about a pool house. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so the, the garage um, and the barn are one in the same. Um, 
it's a when you're inside of it, it's a barn. From the outside of it, it looks like a more of a garage type of thing. Uh, the pool house is next door to it. It's attached, but um, uh, if I can go, let's see. Maybe I could share my screen again here. Let's see. Show your picture. All right, can you see my screen now? Yes. So this, this, this is the garage that we're talking about. It ends, there's a wall here, and this is the, what we're talking about. On this side, there's a, a pool house and a, um, you know, a barn over here. Okay, the other one is, this is the back side of the same building. This is the only part that we're talking about. That little, the bathroom would be back in this area here. We, we're just, we're still seeing the exterior view. Oh, sorry, hang on, let me switch. Uh, switch. <clears throat> um, this one. Yeah, this is the back of the, of the barn. The streets on the other side. This is where the dormer would go in this area. The bathroom is here, and there's a pool house and a pool over here in this area. And this is the this is the barn over here. Does that answer your question? I think. So when you say this is the barn, the the second is that where the garage is? I think you were a little confusing there, Brett. Yeah. I'm Sorry, hang on. Let's go this one. This is barn over here. Yeah. This is garage here. And uh, go to the back. The garage, I think, was originally a barn. That's one of the. That's part of the confusion here. The confusion. But the part that you're referring to now as the barn. What's that used for? Um, they have finished space in there that they use to just, um, uh, it's like a, um, a, what would you call that, Andy? An entertainment room, there's a ping pong table, that sort of thing in there. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. Game room. Is there, um, is there a bathroom in the pool house? No. Okay. I think those are my questions. Um, Jim, would you enlighten us about the um, provision that Margaret was referring to? Uh, yes, uh, Jim Conway here, um, Chairman of uh, Zoning. Um, <clears throat> I would have to research it a bit, but the adaptive reuse of historic barns I believe those barns have to be um, conforming barns, not within a setback. Uh, I think when we get within a setback, that adaptive reuse uh, has to be looked at differently. Um, we can't, I don't believe Zoning Commission um, will allow a reuse of a non-conforming building other than the intended use but adaptive reuse of historic barns, if they're 75 feet off the road, go for it. But any, any barn that's within the setback uh, requires you, you guys, ZBA. Didn't, oh, may I say, I say something? Or, or Jim, do you want yes. to? Uh, I'm just wondering that to uh, my fellow members of the commission, didn't we have a similar situation barn wise uh, with regard to the uh, Calder barn? That, that one of them was a. Uh, <laughs> yes, correct. Non conforming. You, the, oh, it was very non conforming. And the ZBA issued a variance uh, like eight years ago um, before about the time they tore it down, they got a variance to put it back 
in the exact location and it was granted by the ZBA. I th True. I think they moved it back a few feet. Um, well, it's pretty much right on the edge of the road. Um, I, think I know the barn well. Me too. I, but I think they did um, in their application after coming here and, and Mark Picton was talking, he agreed that by taking, I don't know, just six or seven feet off the front of what they planned, he solved one of his problems. So I don't know at which day you saw it, but they did. Right. They okay. did do that. So Calder, Calder had two different, two barns, um, both of which were too close to the road. And one was basically put right back where it came from. And the other one, they moved back a bit. Okay. okay. So, um, Karen, did you have a question? Um, no, I just had a, a comment when we were talking about the barn thing. I was just, it jogged my memory and I thought maybe it would jog our memory collectively about the barn situation. I believe I believe any any structure that's within the 50 foot setback or a side setback um, requires ZBA attention. Um, zoning cannot allow any changes. We did make exceptions for residents. Primary residents uh, can go change up to 25 percent. Um, if they're non-conforming residents. And we wrote that up for people with houses, obviously. Um, but barns, we haven't got there yet, but we're, we're discussing it. Um, the, but still, the non-conforming part will never be used for anything more than it was the original intention. Okay. Well, this is, this is Judith. Go ahead, Judith. Uh, isn't this basically the uh, re, uh, the intended use? I mean, it has been a barn. It has been a garage since for the uh, when it started in the uh, late eighteen hundreds, and maybe even before. So it's going to be a, gra a garage, and it's going to be storage. And so I think, in my opinion, that it's the same use. Is that correct, Jim? I, yes, I would be totally on board with that. Um, it's, you're not totally changing the use. It's storage. Um, as long as it doesn't go beyond that, uh, uh -huh. You can put a bathroom in a garage. You can put a bathroom anywhere you want, as long as you don't have a kitchen sink and mm -hmm. stuff like that. Yeah. Bathrooms, so I don't... I, I, as, as I see it, it's, it's the same use as when it was being built years and years and years and years ago. But a hardship, For storage. But we still need to, even though it's the same use, there still needs to be a hardship. Ah, uh, I, oh, I don't know. I believe I don't know. I believe I don't know about that and then that. Why not? How else? How else could we grant a variance if there's no hardship? Take a look at take a look at Weller's Bridge, and uh, Rocky Mountain. The Colnicks, they have a barn. It's uh, non-conforming, non just by a few feet in the front. And they're, they've changed that over to storage. Uh, obviously, there's, no, to my knowledge, no bathroom, but they they're came in for the building department for, to retrofit it for storage. The issue is not storage. The issue is if there's an expansion of a non-conforming building, in order for us to approve it, there has to be a hardship. It's my understanding. Right. Yep. Yep. I would, yeah, Colnix didn't expand. Colnix didn't expand. No, no dormer. They just used what they had. Right. Right. 
Yeah. Doug? Uh, expansion, uh, in my mind, seems to entail, you know, uh, creating a bigger footprint, but the, the, and, and the, the applicant said that they're not going to create a bigger footprint, but the, but the regulation also says it can't be enlarged either. And I think it's clear here that, that under any definition, they're enlarging the non-conforming structure. So uh, I would agree. I think you, you, the only reason you're here is because you're seeking a variance from that regulation. And if you're seeking a variance, then you have to present a hardship. I, this is Sue Scott. May I just make a comment? Please. Um, couldn't the hardship be the inability to safely access the storage area? Which was pre existing? That's one of our hardships that we have on the application is our, our safety um, issue that we can't access the storage. Yes. Um. This, is, this is Margaret. We did have the safety issue discussed. I think we, we used to think we could do it, but um, I think they're stricter on safety. Um, maybe somebody here remembers the case, but I think that would be a hard argument to make. And, and the testimony has been that you can access it, you can put an interior staircase, it's just the owner doesn't want to do that and risk losing one of the bays of the garage. So it can be done as it exists now, they just don't want to do it that way. Um, I think the most productive comment was Margaret's that maybe uh, if the applicant could show us some decrease in the nonconformity along with this application, then we'd have something to perhaps hang our hat on. Yeah. I would say our other hardship is that we, this barn is built within the setback before, you know, before any of these ordinances came into, uh, to effect. And, you know, the owners have no control over that. They, they love this barn. They love the location of it. They want to keep it. You know, and be able to use it. Um, and if we if we had that anywhere else on the property, we'd be able to do these things that we want to do. But just because it's in that location, um, we can't do that. So that's our that's the that's unfortunately the, the fact that it is in um, the barn is non-conforming is not does not constitute a hardship. <laughs> It's sort of circular. And so we've been told by our attorney numerous times that the, just the existence of the nonconformity itself can, does not constitute um, a hardship. Okay. Um, so. You want to close this part of the meeting? Not yet. Not yet. Okay. Um, is, is Doug's understanding that if you gave up one of the bays, you could build a staircase? I'd have to go back to our architect and see what, what's possible. Okay. Sue? Because I'm sorry, this is Sue Scott. I was back when asked the same thing. Um, it's, it seems like if if we, you could actually build a staircase using where one of the bays is, wouldn't that um, solve the problem that was the part of the hardship? Um, it probably solves part of the hardship, but then we probably have uh, more parking on the street and um, have, there's three parking bays. There's three parking bays and we'd probably have to change one of the garage doors around so you wouldn't have the look as you have on the front of the building right now so would the staircase be in the back or well the yeah. back of the front yeah. the back of the building oh, the other end of the road. so we'd probably be back here again like looking for uh, <laughs> you know changing the building by a, a door yeah, there's not enough headroom in the back of the building to put a staircase up there. Okay, so it has to be like sort of in the center. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. So 
one of the things that constrains us is if there are other ways to do this separate from granting a hardship, then it, then it, um, uh, it makes the argument for the hardship. <clears throat> it's supposed to be basically, there's no other way to do it. So, um, let me see, any more comments or questions before we close the public hearing? Wait, before we close the public hearing, let me, let me ask uh, another question. Um, would you want to go back to the architect and ask them the two questions that have come up? One is, can the staircase be anywhere else? Um, that doesn't require a dormer. And the second question, um, does the dormer have to be as large as it is? Um, because if we give a hardship, it's supposed to be the minimal amount. Um, so if you wanted to do that, we could continue the hearing. If we close the hearing, we're gonna make a decision tonight. I think we probably want to uh, continue the hearing. I can go back to the architect, see if we have another solution. Yeah. And, uh, I think we could go from there. Yeah. I think the other thing to, to talk to him about is Margaret and Doug's point about is there a, is there a way to reduce the nonconformity because reduction of the nonconformity makes it a lot easier to grant the variance because the, the regulation is um, that you can't, the, the goal of doing this is to decrease the nonconformity. Anybody else want to make, uh, have comments or suggestions to um, Brent if he's going to go talk to the architect again? But, um, this, uh, Karen, my, uh, um, this has nothing to do with the architect and the staircase. I'm wondering, uh, are we all so sure that the safety issue is a non-starter here? I'm not even sure I know what the safety issue is. It's current use is storage or you either store something or you don't store something. I'm not sure I even understand the safety issue. The, the safety issue is that they're carrying furniture and, and objects up a, up a ladder and trying to get them into like heavy objects up over their head into a, into a crawl space type of thing that they can't, they can't access. So um, very difficult. So, uh, I, 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 please don't think I'm being flippant, but you, you just don't do that then. Just, you know, it's not mandatory that you store something, you know, in a small tight space above your head if it's too heavy to lift. It, it, to me, a safety issue is something that is, you know, maybe it, there's a traffic issue or there is, uh, you know, something else, but a safety issue related to a voluntary activity that you either do or you don't do is, uh, it doesn't, doesn't amount to one, in my opinion. And if I could just add in, I'm, I'm pretty sure we went over this, we, um, prior to the new law uh, and new explanations, we did consider with the doctor on Church Street, who had, I believe, Parkinson's, and um, we did consider safety in that case. And I think we were, I recall me think, looking at the law as explained to us subsequently and thinking, this is harsh. <laughs> um, safety just doesn't seem to have, a, have a much of an opening here. Well, I think since the question has come up, if, if the commissioners, the board agrees that there is a safety issue, we can consult with Gail. But if we're, but if we don't agree that there is, that the, the safety issue carries weight, then I think there's no point in going to Gail and asking her the question. I, so, I agree with Doug in that it, it really is, it's an option, it's voluntary. And we were looking at the entrance uh, previously, the only entrance for a, a woman with Parkinson's and um, 
you know, it was a very, um, it, was, it was like a handicap access thing. And even that <clears throat> is, began to look iffy. So I would say, I would agree with Doug that, that probably um, the old fashioned way of getting stuff up into a loft, uh, at any rate, that, that probably there isn't a safety issue because there is no necessity to no. Um, no. climb the stairs to get up there with heavy, heavy furniture. One of the standards is if the building is usable um, without the variance, then uh, you're not supposed to grant a variance. If, and the building has been used for many years the way it is. So um, one of the things I would tell you is about, I don't know how many years ago now, two or three years, uh, uh, several court cases, court decisions came down that significantly tied our hands more than they used to be tied. And so it's a lot harder to grant a variance than it used to be. So uh, does the board have any more questions or comments? And then I'm going to ask Brent if they want to ask for a continuation. No, I have none. Okay. So do you want, is, is that your, is that your request is that we continue it? I believe, yes. Okay. Okay. So can I have a motion to continue the public hearing, please? So move. Second. Margaret. I second. Um, Margaret makes the motion and Karen seconds. All in favor. Aye. 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 Okay. Opposed? Abstentions? Okay. So um, we will, Julie can work with you about it. About, yeah, yeah go ahead. Yeah, I'll talk to Julie. We'll work out the, the details, but uh, I'll go back to the architect. Okay. Um, see if I can reduce the nonconformity, see if I can uh, redesign some staircase things, and uh, we'll move forward. But, see uh, if the dormer can be any smaller. I will. I, will. I appreciate your comments and uh, trying to find a way to work with me on it to get it done. So I appreciate it. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We're going to now, the, the um, public hearing is continued, and now I'm going to call to order the special meeting. It's a special meeting because it's not in our regular date, and also because you're welcome to stay, um, but we won't be talking about your application anymore. You're, you're, welcome. Welcome. you're also welcome to leave, too. <laughs> Whatever you prefer. Um, Bye. Thank you. Bye, Andy. Bye. Bye, bye. Andy. Bye, Andy. Thank you. Nanette. Nanette, bye. I'm uh, Jim Conway. I'm I'm signing off. Okay. Bye, thank Jim. you, Jim. Bye, bye, Jim. Okay. Any any questions? Uh, please call. Uh, contact me. Not a problem. Okay. Thank you. Alrighty. You were a help. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good night. Thanks. Good night. Bye. Thanks. You too. Stay safe. <laughs> Um, okay, so I'm going to call to order the special meeting and um, ask the members to identify themselves, please. Karen? Karen Copta, member. Doug? D Douglas Lewis, alternate. Nancy? Nancy Schoenholtz, alternate. Um, Margaret Minor, member. Sue? Sue? Sure. I, I can't see. I see one person at a time here. So who's got alternate? <laughs> Judith? Uh, Judith, uh, regular. Member. <laughs> Nanette Falkenberg. Yeah. Okay, we have three orders of business. I'm going to move Doug up. Um, we have three orders of business. Well, now we have, uh, we actually now have, yes. First is approval of the minutes from the October 7th, 2019 meeting included in your packet. 
Um, can I have a motion to improve the minute, approve the minutes? I make that motion to approve the minutes of October 7, 2019. Second. I second. Karen Copta, I second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Okay. Um, does everyone have a copy of the, of the proposed meeting schedule and, um, that was included in your packet? We, this is our first meeting actually of the year, so we need to approve the meeting schedule. Oh, that's right. Yeah, I have it. This is Judith. I have it. I have it. So we, uh, I make a motion that we approve the 2020 meeting schedule. Second. Do I have a second? Uh, uh, I'll second it. Doug seconds. Um, discussion. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Aye. Uh, Judith has asked for a moment of, uh, before we go on to the next issue of election of officers, Judith has um, asked for a moment. All right. Hello, everybody. This is Judith. Thankfully, you can't see me. <laughs> uh, before we get into the election of officers, uh, I want you to uh, know that after much thought, I'm uh, resigning my position on the ZBA effective at the end of May. This has been a uh, long discussion with myself. And uh, I find that uh, I've spent many, many years volunteering on the planning and on the ZBA. And I find now that it's definitely the time for me to retire. Definitely. Uh, I, uh, it was a hard decision, but a necessary one. Of course, uh, with my leaving, uh, after careful thought, but I recommend that Doug Lewis be moved into my regular membership and the vice chair position. This is just something for you all to think about while you're, think, you know, going into the next meeting. I think that he would be a wonderful person to take over this. And uh, I wanted you to know that that's the way I would have done this. Uh, of course, uh, goes without saying, I'm going to miss you all and hope that we can continue keeping in touch. It will be uh, very sad for me not to hear from some people, okay? Thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Judith, thank we you. will, at the next meeting, we'll appropriately thank you, but um, I can see from people's faces that um, people understand, but are very sorry. Um, and we will miss you. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you, Judith. Thank you, Judith. Thank you for all your service beyond the ZBA and all of the land use work you've done. So, um, my suggestion, since this idea is new to us and new to Doug, um, <laughs> my th thought would be to not act on this tonight, but I, I'd like to talk like to people um, and to Doug and then to other people about um, their opinion of uh, 
to this recommendation. So my thought would be if you agree that we put this decision off until next month. Sure. I agree. Okay. Sure. Sure. Okay. Sue? Yes. <laughs> I was nodding. Okay. Yes. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, then we will put this off until next month. And um, with that, I would take a motion to adjourn the meeting. Wow. <laughs> I take a motion to adjourn the meeting. Yay. <laughs> I second it. All in favor. Aye. 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 Well done. Well done, Annette. <laughs> yes, well, as you. always. Big thanks as to Julie. Always. Thanks to thank, Julie. Thank you, Julie. Thank you, Julie. Oh, you're thank welcome. You, Julie. Thank you, Julie. The screens and putting things up. Very good. And Julie's getting up her throat. We're oh, learning. She's and we, and we, and world. <laughs> Ooh, um, I'm just wondering, oh, do, are, are we I'm like, actually gonna, I'm going to stop recording. Okay. And